Now, one of the last reactions that we're going to see for the mechanisms is the addition of phosphorus ilids. So the overall observed reaction takes an aldehyde here, or a ketone, right, with an alkyl halide, and then we use triphenylphosphine and n-butyl lithium. And in the end, what this makes is an alkene. Right. So um, it's a very important and interesting reaction. In fact, it won Wittig the Nobel Prize in 1979. So there's two parts to this reaction here. So let's take a look down below, see if we can outline the basics of it. So what we're going to start off with here is PPH3. So let's take a second. We're going to draw this out here right, with our three phenyl groups here and a lone pair. All right, now what we're going to do here is add our CH3 to this, CH3Br, so plus this, and we'll just make that a halogen, just to make it generic. All right, so um, this is like an SN2, so we see a faster reaction if we uh, have, of course, right, a methyl a primary, right, alkyl halide. Right, so what we're going to get here is an SN2 reaction where we just kick off that. Right, so again, highlighting that, that is an SN2 reaction, right? So looks like one, it is one. Uh, what that's going to give us here is our phosphorus connected to a CH3. Now, when I write that CH3 out, I want to put the H's out for a second because we're going to see how this next step is important. And then we're going to put all of our benzene rings on this thing. Okay. Now, that's going to give us a plus charge right here. Okay. Now, we'd like to give some electrons back to that phosphorus. And we're going to lose an H. So the next step of this reaction, we're going to have N-butyl lithium come into play. So N-butyl lithium is a very strong base, right? It's uh, hard at hard and, and dangerous to work with. You have to be careful working with it. But what we want to do is we want to talk about places where we can do deprotonations next to this. So at the, at the kind of at the beta position. So this carbon, we have H's. Right? There's H's that are here. But note, and this is an important thing to point out, that all these positions here, right, and this guy down here too, all of those positions have no H atoms. So we don't risk doing a deprotonation somewhere else. So then what's going to happen now is that base is going to come around, grab one of those H's, and we're going to get electrons coming onto that carbon. So we'll abbreviate those benzenes as just a pH right now. That's going to give us our carbon here with our two H's on it and a minus charge set of electrons and a plus charge here. Okay, now this, if you look at it, it has resonance, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to take these electrons and swing them down just like so. And that will give us our other resonance structure with our carbon and our two H's here. All right, so this thing here is called your ilid. So it is pronounced ilid. All right, and it turns out that this also is 
a very powerful nucleophile. Right? In particular, this carbon atom right here is the nucleophilic position that's going to react. Right? So again, pointing that out, that carbon atom, not only is it a that powerful nucleophile, right, but it's the carbon atom that adds to our ketone or your aldehyde. All right, so that ilid is something that's going to be important. So that's our that's our part one. Now what we want to do is we want to take that and we want to look at our part two. So let's scroll down here and let's take a look at the second reaction here. So part two, we're going to start off with our ilid. And what we want to do is we want to take the form that has the negative charge on that carbon. So we're going to swing over here and draw the other resonance form of that. So we get that. All right. And then really there's just about three steps left here. So what we're going to do then is we're going to add this to, and let's just label this here as R1 carbonyl R2. All right. So what's going to happen is that this is going to swing around here and do that. All right, so when it does that, we're going to form this charged intermediate. Right, so let's see if we can highlight where all these things are going to be. So what I want to do over here is let's start off here and let's put that carbon here. So that is this carbon here. And then off of that carbon, you have R1, you have R2, right? And then we're going to have an oxygen. So this up here is going to be our oxygen and it will have a minus charge. A new bond has been made, right? So here's the new bond, and that new bond that's been made is to this carbon, which is here, right? So that carbon is here, and connected off of that, you have two H's, right? And then coming up here, you have phosphorus, and then I'm gonna write this as a pH three here. And a pH three, um, and a plus charge. Right, so we're writing it out that way for a particular reason. This intermediate has a name. It's called a beta ion. Okay. So then what happens is that this thing wants to form a ring. So you can see why we put these together. But we're going to come over and we're going to do this. Right, so what that's going to do is that's going to give us this next intermediate. So we'll write out our H's here. There's our carbon, R1, R2, phosphorus, oxygen. Right, and then of course here you have your pH 3. Right, your lone pair on there. This thing is called an oxophosphatane. And at this point in time, we're really close to our final product. So the last thing that's going to happen down here is that we're going to take our electrons and we're going to swing them around like this and then come down like that. So what that's going to give us here is the following product, right? So here's your R1, your carbon, and your R2. So this group right here is going to become a C with two H's. There's your CH2. All right, so you get your alkene, 
right? And then the other thing that we're going to get is our pH three, right? P double bond. Oh, so it's a really clever way of getting an alkene here. And we do that without having um, to undergo carbocations and worry about rearrangements and all sorts of other um, issues that, that pop up with trying to make carbon-carbon double bonds. So as far as multi-step goes, when your product has a double bond in it, this is, at least for this chapter, um, you ought to be thinking of doing um, the Wittig reaction.